It's David. I'm working uh, for a company called Proceben. We are a large uh, media uh, network, uh, media group. Um, started in TV about 20 years ago um, and are now a very diversified media company in digital services, e-commerce, music, entertainment, and I represent the mobile games division. So ma ma some questions that you might ask yourself. Uh, so TV, okay, using TV as a user acquisition channel for mobile games. So questions you might ask yourself is how much does it cost? Is it profitable at all? Um, so what is, what is my return on investment? How many users do I reach? Things you might ask yourself is can I boost into the charts? Um, so in order to, to generate qu quickly a huge amount of users, how can I track it actually? Um, are some games more suitable for TV than others, some genres? And what is the quality of users? The quality of users ranges, of, of course, across every user acquisition channel. What are the revenue, what are the business models? And maybe how can I work with Proceven? Okay, some really quick uh, numbers about Proceven. We're quite a stable company, making 600 million euros in revenues on a quarterly basis. Uh, have TV channels, uh, primarily in the German-speaking territories, Sat1, which is this little ball up there, is a more general interest. Then we have Proceven, which, was, which looks like a, a seven. And then we have some niche channels, women channel, a male channel, and so forth. Um, I work for 100% subsidiary of Proceven. We are uh, 150 people based in Munich. We are an uh, online and mobile game publisher. Um, our online games business is uh, based primarily on exclusive distribution and uh, publishing partnership we have with Sony Online Entertainment. And we are full-blown, full-service publisher from QA to uh, public relations, product management, PR, everything's in-house. Okay, now you all know this statistic is probably very well known to you. There are a lot of apps out there um, over a million on iOS and Android. There are over 250, 260,000 app publishers. How am I going to ever compete against these other guys? Many of them have big pockets, and um, prices are really increasing on the CPI level, especially on Christmas. It was really driving us nuts as well. However, we're focusing also on TV, and in Germany, there are about 36 million active gamers um, and 166 million ga active gamers in Europe. So it's quite a huge market. Can we target them with uh, TV? So our networks reach 70% of the audience, of the gamers' audience. And also what's interesting is that 86% um, are actually uh, using their smartphone while watching TV. We call that second screen uh, application. Um, okay, uh, let me show you a TV commercial of a campaign we have been running. Um, the developer is called Come To Us. It's a Korean developer. And the game uh, we have uh, been advertising and publishing on iOS and Android uh, is called Heroes War. Okay. Okay, one anecdote I want to tell you about this also is that there are many, many games called Heroes War. Uh, not Hero, uh, not Heroes War, but Heroes or even War. So in, on Google Play, you have to have a li little bit of patience so, you know, so that you actually start ranking. So this is something we also had to learn. The name was called Heroes War from early start, but when we launched it in Germany, fresh, since there were other games uh, called Heroes or War and rankings really, really strong, we gave them more or less traffic for free by promoting the game on TV. So people would go into the store in Heroes or War and then not find our game but find other games. So this is a learning I can share that you really have to be careful with regard to uh, synchronizing your campaigns and ranking actually in the app stores. That is very significant. But on, on, on Google Play Store, it took only roughly about a day until we really ranked high, so it was, it was okay. Another uh, campaign commercial which I want to show you is called Gold Star. Here we are not a, um, a publisher, but we're kind of an exclusive distribution partner. Schlag ein Hole in One auf den schönsten uh, Fairways der Welt okay. mit Golf Star, der besten Golf-Simulation für dein Smartphone und Tablet.
lebensecht und ultrarealistisch. No erlebe das Spiel auf dem Green auf völlig neue Art. Greif dir dein Eisen und spiele. At least Wann you got the du willst, uh, audio. Wo That's immer great. Golfstar. Jetzt im App Store und bei Google Play. So we actually changed that because the voice of this uh, narrator was actually too, we, we thought it was too old. And so users in that audience actually want to be not um, characterized as old people. So we changed the voice, we changed also the, the, uh, the music behind it, more some sort of a hard rock, a young um, demographic, and that was really performing much better. However, that commercial which was aired uh, in September on the 22nd, 23rd, uh, for seven days, this is a, a five-day shot, is showing clearly the direct correlation between installs and TV. So the white line is the TV media and the red one is the installations. Because I have been told that in other territories, for instance Russia, there's almost no impact with regard to installs and we're just proving that this is not the case. Uh, you can also see here from uh, ranking position that um, I don't know. Is, does this have does this have a laser pointer? Which one is is that one? Oh. Okay. So um, the campaign started here on the 23rd. Prior to campaign, uh, the TV campaign, you see that here on the overall chart, it was somewhat here in more or less in the Nirvana, and then we ran a, a commercial here in that space. And you also see post campaign that also the ranking effect is definitely positive and the game actually keeps performing very well. Still one of the top ranked and top grossing uh, sports games in the German market. So how much does it cost? Uh, of course, important question. Uh, the other one question you might ask yourself is <coughs> what is the CPI? And the answer is, of course, it depends. As, uh, I cannot give you a clear um, ballpark figure because it really depends on very, very many different factors. Um, of course, it, not every game goes uh, targets a mass market like Candy Crush. Gold Star is quite a niche game. Uh, so you have to take into consideration what is my, my net breach? Um, and uh, what is my budget? Uh, what is the uh, cost per mill? Is the thousand um, contact price on the campaign on the TV flights? Uh, that can also vary um, with regard to the season seasonality. On Christmas, of course, there's a lot of competition, a lot of people competing for um, visibility. Therefore, CPM tends to be very high. In January, CPM goes much lower because people have spent their budget, and therefore pricing is 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 um, much more affordable. Uh, it depends, of course, where you're buying. Uh, do you have a media agency that has a very strong uh, bulk purchase, pu purchase power? Do you have a direct corporation, maybe? So it really depends on the discount, of course. Uh, it depends on how long is the, the duration of the campaign. Um, how many commercials will I be running? How many games? Uh, how many variations? For instance, we have um, a customer we're also not doing publishing, but also doing classic promotion service for game companies. Uh, they're having four commercials. I mean, producing four commercials can be quite expensive, you know, and um, therefore that needs to be taken into definite consideration. Uh, sample TV media plan light. So this is really just to give you a, a really short overview of how a campaign might look like. So in this in this campaign here. We were running for seven days from the 23rd to the 29th. A budget is, uh, I can't tell you right now, the potential is 12 million. Male, age 18 to 45. And then they have this thing called GRP. It's called gross rating point. What does it say? It is actually a formula that says, what is your net reach? So in this case, the 12.4 million users that you're aiming to reach, how many have you reached? And then what is the opportunity to see? What is the number of contacts that have been generated? So if you multiply that together, you kind of get this figure is called GRP. Normally this is actually 100%. What it actually means that at least one contact per person has been on average been uh, generated. Um, per week, it is um, advisable to have at least 80 to 100 gross rating points in order to reach your customers. Here, 
In this case, it was 22.4 of the target audience has been reached and, at, and have been exposed at an average of 4.5 times to the commercial. That is a decent mix. Now what you also might want to look at is, now these are very simple variables. Of course, what you can do is then combine those variables, namely taking, I'm sorry, this is German, uh, a time a look as well as a per channel look, TV broadcast channel. Uh, distribution share versus time share. Here as a simple uh, view, it's, uh, it says ProSieben, which is uh, slightly skewed to the male audience, exactly actually that one. Kabel is a TV, um, is a movie channel, so we had a very strong distribution towards ProSieben, 89% and 11% for the movie channel. So what would, you, what would you do in the next time? Probably in the next flight you, you say, okay, how many installs have been generated uh, directly attributable to the ProSieben users, then you might see, uh, compare them with the cable one right now, and next time you might actually s shift the budget from here to there. That is something which you also have to do. A-B testing in TV marketing is also very, very important. What we did here for this campaign is that we took a large portion of that audience in the space 13 to 17 p.m., so 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. That is the time many, many students come home from school and then what do they do? They usually maybe do their homework, they should be doing their homework, I guess. And, uh, but of course, a large majority maybe watches TV and then uh, likes to play games. Uh, important is also here, the 21% is the access time, it's called 5 p.m. to uh, 8 p.m. And after 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., that's called the prime time. Prime time is the time where you actually get most of the users, but on the other hand, you also have to pay uh, a, lot, a high price. So that's the trade-off, paying high price versus getting high volume in a short time, so you have to balance that out. Okay, how are installs being tracked? I briefly mentioned to you that if you have a tracking solution in place, such as has offers or MAT, you can take a look at the 15 minute or 30 minute installs after the commercial has been on air. So you will just see what are the directly attributable installs by minute tracking, saying, okay, for instance, a TV commercial, they will give you exact delivered flights, uh, the time schedule, and then you can see, okay, how many installs have been delivered on uh, 15 to 30 minutes after that commercial. But you, of course, and that is the key, because the campaign itself then will never be profitable, you have to measure the incremental effect that means if you are aiming for a non-burst campaign, you think, what is the overall organic chat traffic in comparison to a certain other delta or a certain other time interval you're looking prior to the campaign? So you're measuring the organic app store traffic prior to a TV campaign. And then you're taking a look at what is going on maybe one or two or three days after. What I have shown also previously with the Golf Star example, exactly what you would do. Um, burst campaign, if you're saying and that also depends on the flight strategy. If you spend, let's say, 100,000 euros uh, for a TV campaign, what is the duration of the campaign? Maybe do a, do a short thing in order to burst. So that would be a burst campaign, and then you see, am I being able, actually able to boost into the charts with that amount? Maybe on top you do a little, little bit of performance marketing with various mobile ad networks or with some other uh, smart channels that you're using already. And then you're actually measuring the chart boost effect. So the organic chart traffic that you're getting on top of these 15 to 30 minute installs. Uh, and of course you have to always do the A-B testing as I said. What will not work is if you advertise on TV something like, you know, go to www.getsomethingforfree.com and then you measure the so-called impact of this landing page and usually this will not really be successful. So wrapping up a little bit, so what are the pros of using TV as a mobile acquisition channel. You can use it as a burst campaign method, so in order to get generate fast growth of installs. It is possible to boost into charts. Uh, you know that all these, uh, you know, these uh, incentivized networks which give you a lot of traffic, the quality is very bad, but it, you look for other measures in order to burst, and without incent traffic, using TV, it is actually possible. Definitely there is a very strong long-term awareness and you're also building a strong brand equity. Um, it's hard to prove that through data, to be honest. Uh, you have to take a look uh, on a long-term basis and follow the game. 
And of course, what contributes to that is the fact that TV channels are trusted channels and they can convey emotions. It's very powerful. We see in the reviews, for instance, for some games that we have been advertising on TV that, hey, you know what? I saw this commercial, this commercial on TV. This must be a cool game. Because why ProSieben? I know most of you guys probably don't know ProSieben because you're not from Germany, but in Germany everyone knows this channel, and therefore they trust this is not a bad thing that I'm loading on my, to my device. It will not be filled with, with uh, some bad software, with malware, or whatever. And then, as I said, you have to measure <coughs> the positive midterm and, and long term effects, the App Store optimization effects. And then you will also have, I think, with, and I would next time I'll promise I'll try to bring some data, um, standalone mobile performance TV campaign as opposed to TV plus mobile performance. I'm 100% sure that the conversion rate, the click through rate of mobile performance which be, will be higher if you target specifically the same target audience. You also have word of mouth effects. You have higher app store installation rates because as I said, hey, I saw this TV commercial on a trusted channel. And what we haven't tested yet is, but which we will do, especially on channels which we have used, on TV channels which we have used for user acquisition successfully. For instance, we have a women's channel called Six. We will run re-engagement campaigns. So these channels have maybe a, sh a share of market of one or two percent. You will always reach the same audience at a certain point in time. But those who have installed the game, you can actually re-engage. And definitely what I can say is you have a high quality of users. Think about it. You take out your, you see a TV commercial, take out your smartphone. I mean, you're probably laying on your sofa and, you know, somebody's bugging you. And then you take out, you're typing in something and then you're hitting the install button. So the, uh, the, the willingness to install that is quite high. Therefore, the quality of the user is definitely high. The cons. Okay, you need to be confident on LTV. That's kind of a no-brainer. Everyone has, of course, to be confident on LTV lifetime value. What do I mean by that? I mean that you shouldn't test TV in the early days when you're not sure is the game monetizing well. You should be very confident on the overall revenue per installation, on the overall lifetime ARPU of your users. Pricing seems to be high, but again, this is not true if you factor in all the other effects, the incremental effects that I have been mentioning. Uh, on of, and of course, this is something which cannot be neglected, which is a uh, cost position is uh, the, the, the overall drag cost will, of course, uh, grow with the number of variation of TV commercials uh, you will produce. Different uh, themes, different motives, different time, let's say 30 second spot, 10 second spot, 15 second spot, maybe longer than that. And also media planning, you don't have, usually as a mobile game developer or publisher, you do not have the expertise in-house. You need external experts to kind of help you do that. And um, something which is different is that pricing and policies varies among TV broadcasts. It's a very national thing, very local thing. Pricing can be very, very, I would say, intransparent. So it is something which you definitely have to invest in, but I'm 100% sure, and I think I have shown to you that this is a channel that will definitely uh, pay up positively. Thank you very much. I'm open for questions. Thank you, David. <coughs> Let's have uh, questions from the audience as we're short on time. Anybody? Nobody? All right, so I'll ask a question then. Um, when I put my game into the channel, uh, if I just let it go and don't purchase any players, I'm going to get numbers back that are pretty high because the people who find the game organically are going to give you higher KPIs than people that you've purchased and brought in. So you say that we need to be confident on lifetime value um, before going to, uh, to television advertising. Um, how do I prepare and become confident of LTV? And how do I know when um, I'm ready for television advertising? Well, I mean, obviously, the RRI calculation is simple. You have a lifetime value minus the cu customer acquisition cost. That is the RRI. If you have organic traffic, the customer acquisition cost will be zero. So therefore, all your lifetime value will be 100% margin. If you deduct from that the TV expense, then you, of course, can calculate whether you will still run at a profit. Uh, again, my LTVs are going to be higher if from players I find organically as opposed to players I've purchased. 
Right, right. But um, if if you are happy with uh, a certain amount of uh, level of revenue base, then of course, then you will stay at that. But of course, you want to scale your business, and if you have decently enough margin in order to in reinvest in new users, therefore, I think it makes definitely sense. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, David. Thank you.